Hello, writers. Happy Monday. We have Ted joining us again, who's happy and well. Ted, everybody missed you. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Good to be back. Okay. So we've talked in the past about focus. Um, we, we're bringing it up again because we had a great success story that was published by Yvonne Audi. And I loved her acronym that she used for focus. And I'm going to read it just so I don't mess it up. But it's follow one course until successful. And I think that many, I mean, AWAI has literally hundreds of offerings, right? Which can sometimes make you feel like you need hundreds of things in order to be successful. But can you just talk about like the power of power of focus and follow through and all those things that truly lead up to that success? Yeah, we've touched on this before, you and I, in different ways. I mean, I think mm -hmm. there's there's the idea that, you know, you've heard different things, the 1% rule. You and I have leaned into this statement of long-term consistency will always be trumped by, or long-term consistency will always trump short-term intensity. Mm -hmm. In this instance, I do believe um, that our friend is onto something. I've, I never heard that acronym before. Maybe she made yeah, it up. I think she made it up. Yeah. Because it was her, her game changer. Once she focused on one course, it was her yeah. game changer. Well, this is an interesting one because... It's almost, and just stick with me for a second. It's almost like we want to nullify people's excitement sometimes so mm -hmm. that they become successful. And this is what I mean by that. Somebody actually puts two feet in the water and says, I'm going to go try this writing thing. And then they get engaged with AWAI. And like you said, as the example, AWAI, and there's hundreds of courses, well, I'm ready to go. So I'm going to go sign up for this because that sounds appealing. This one's really promising a client within 45 days, like there's all these different things and I'm just going to go take four or five of them. And I'm not sure that's the way to go. And so that's what I mean by nullify the excitement a little bit. It's almost like put your excitement in a box and contain it, save some of it for a couple months down the line when you get into the next one. But I think our friends on to something about pick one, immerse yourself into it because there's an important thing that comes after immersing yourself in one, becoming the master in something, whether it be the website writing or white paper writing or whatever mm -hmm. it may be. Now as an entrepreneur, a solopreneur, you can go test it. And this is a little different than like marketing testing. This is, yeah, yeah. you want to see that one, because there's two words that I've always put together on here, fulfillment and prosperity. Let's just stick with the white paper for a second. Mm -hmm. You took a course on white papers, you did it, you, you can go write a white paper now, write a white paper, say that five times. <laughs> and then, and then here, now go see two things. One, does it feel good? Are you enjoying mm -hmm. it? Is it fulfilling? Mm -hmm. So here's that word, fulfillment and prosperity. And two, are you able to produce income from it? Mm -hmm. So now you can go see, because if, if you can, and you had an income goal for the year, and it looks like white paper is going to do X amount for it. Now you go scan those courses and say, where, what else do I need to add to my lever? Or you find out, oh, my God, I just got a request for six white papers within the next 45 days. I'm swarmed. You're done, yeah. Do you see what I mean? From a business yeah. perspective, you need to be able to go because you should have those goals, which we're going to get into in a couple of weeks here, I believe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You should have those goals. And if you have those goals and you test something, you might be halfway there or three quarters there, but you won't know. And that's why I think this idea of really focusing on, on one thing, and it's not sometimes not one singular thing, but really slowing yourself down. Yeah. And I, so coming from somebody that is very excitable, I'll also <laughs> say maybe a way to, to look at what you said about the nullifying is also channeling, right? Like almost focus again. Get like you can focus that excitement and energy into one singular thing versus the 10 things, which I think helps yeah. momentum to getting it done first off. Um, but I also think that there's different uh definitions of success. And I think number one, like finishing and completing a course is an act of success. You know what I mean? So it's like Absolutely. it's like you've got that like under your belt, check number one. Check number two, like I love what you said, like proof of concept type of thing, right? Like, can I go and do this? Do I enjoy doing this? And then say that is yes, check. If no, I think you've, you've learned something. 
you know something about yourself, you can never unknow that knowledge. It's it's always in your bank. If somebody comes to you and say, like, say you decide to go to email writing and that client is like, hey, do you know how to write white papers? Now you can say yes, right? So it's never like a lost right. something if the path is no. But say then That's it right. is, yes, I enjoy this. Then the next level of, okay, can we actually make a living out of this? Can we find clients with this? And then like that level of yes. So I think there's also... Uh, levels of success but I think whenever you focus your energies into one place it's always um, going to result in more success than than like spreading it out you know across the board Um, yeah yeah, I love that I agree I agree what is that saying master of many master of none and then uh, deck of all trades and master Jack of all none. trades, master of none. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. yes. I think there's, you want to start out, master. There, I think I think there's truth to that. Yeah, you know? yeah. So. And I just also think like something that we've talked about a lot, and that we see in a lot of new writers is a lack of confidence. And I think if you can complete one course, master that one thing, you know, build up your business, like that is going to help your level of confidence as well. Versus like. I've got like 10 things here and I'm unable to complete anything. That's not going to work well for confidence wise, you know? No, no, not at all. So this is absolutely, it well ties into the psyche 100%, which is that idea of what I was talking about. The testing will actually tie into the psyche too, because if you go test it and you're winning with it, you're like, Oh, I'm onto something here. Yeah. And then you'll be able to adjust what you need to add. Um, how, do you ever see the problem or how can people, if they encounter this, like the testing doesn't work and then you throw like throw out the baby with the box or whatever, <laughs> lack of a better yeah. term? Well, I go back into what you just said, but guess what? You have the skill. Mm-hmm. It may resurface. We've talked about this in the past in a different way, like the old adage, don't burn bridges, right? Mm-hmm. Like You never know when a past client's going to circle back. It could be two years from now, right? Yeah. It could be... Yeah. Same thing here. You learn how to white white papers. It's not working. And then all of a sudden, 18 months down the line, you get engaged with a new client that says, we want you to rewrite our website. Okay. Yeah. And then in conversation, because you're now consultative and you're asking the client questions about their writing needs and they go, well, we really want to publish white papers, but we just don't have anybody to do them. And you're like, ah. Oh. So again, you're not throwing this thing out. Like you said, you've acquired this skill. Nobody can take it from you now. Yes. Um, And you don't know when it's going to come into play. But for right now, it might just not be the mainstay in your writing career. But you have it. Yes, you have it. I love that. Nobody can take that away from you. Okay. Like main takeaway that you want everybody to take away from today. What would you say that would be? I like you. Channel it. Channel the excitement. Put it in a box. It's kind of like the candy now and laters. Spend some now in the way of getting into it like one course or one one course of action to, towards your writing career and then save some of it for later and then get into the thing. But this is about channeling that excitement and getting focused on one thing. And remember, when we are saying one thing, we're not saying that you're singularly focused in a day. Mm. We're saying that the ratio shouldn't be a fifth, a fifth, a fifth, a fifth. It should be more like 70-30. Like you're working on this other thing 30%, but you're really highly focused on this and you're going to see it all the way through to the testing phase. Yeah. And I just thought of something like sometimes it might be scary to make one decision because what if it's the wrong one for me? And I just want to remind everyone and Ted, you know, we have the most amazing member success team. If you're ever stuck or trapped, you know, like you, there's a team that can help you uh, with your questions that you might have if this is the right decision, depending on what, again, what your goals are, right? Um, so don't feel like you need to make the decision alone. I just want to remind everybody of that. And then, so any homework for today, Ted? Well, if you're in, I think you need to do an audit of what you're involved in right now. Yeah. So the homework is auditing what you're involved. Are you? 70% focus on a singular thing. And if you're not, how can you back into this and kind of peel this back to get focused on one thing and do some other things peripherally? But you really do need to audit about how you're spending your time and your focus right now. And I will say it's it's pretty easy when it comes to a lot of our courses because there's live and then there's like um, evergreen versions of which you can go into at any time, right? Yeah. And I would say 
if you're deciding between like stick to the live, you're you you're there, make like show up, do the work, get the review, all that stuff, and put the other ones on the shelf for right now, and then you can go back and visit if that helps anybody uh, to audit at all with decision making. Yeah. But yes, I like I'm gonna say it again. Focus one course until success. <laughs> Love it. Awesome. So like Ted mentioned, we're going to get into goals soon. So we'll do a couple of weeks on goals and we shall see everybody then. Thank you, Ted. See you next week.